Neutron stars are the ultra dense core of a massive star that collapsed. You'll see it's intense. When a massive super giant star just like me runs out of fuel, let's look from the start so we can see. When the massive hot plasma are being pulled in by gravity, they squeeze the core with force fusing nuclei in the core you see. Then hydrogen fuses into helium, releasing energy from the core, pushing against the inward gravity. Now this star is stable as long as those balance hold strong. But if the hydrogen runs out, something goes terribly wrong. The star's core turns into iron, the ash of the once nuclear core. Because there's no more energy pushing outward, gravity squeezes more. This enormous pressure from gravity crushes the star's core, fusing electrons with protons into neutrons, I assure. These neutrons get squeezed so tightly by the outward gravity into the iron core which it deflects while the star implodes you see the star explodes into space when bouncing off its iron core causing a supernova explosion so bright it's not obscure what is left of this massive super giant star it's what this song is about it's called a neutron star a neutron star is the strongest gravity outside a black hole you know if it were any more dense it would become a black hole if you cram one to three solar masses into a sphere 12 miles across you'd have the mass of the neutron star inside it's clear neutron stars are the ultra dense core of a massive star that collapsed you'll see it's intense a pulsar is a star that emits regular oscillations i say with the luminosity that does pulse in a metronomic way when you look into the night sky from earth's surface you see the sparkling stars in the sky but what is this these stars twinkle slightly and most do this i share because of slight disturbances in earth's atmosphere but when an astrophysicist observed the night sky in the 1960s and other wavelengths she saw stars that flicker over time regularly professor dame jocelyn balbur now made the first discovery of a pulsar star as a student at cambridge university these pulsars are well outside our solar system but found within the milky way that galaxy that holds our sun more than 2,000 pulsars have been discovered so far in the milky way out of the hundred thousand million stars if you look closely at one of these pulsar stars we can see what astronomers theorize they are they're highly magnetized rotating neutron stars that emit beams of electromagnetic radiation out of their magnetic poles i admit they're observed when a beam of emission is pointing towards the Earth. It's responsible for the pulsed appearance of emission, of course. This is similar to a pulsar, but how are they born? Let's look at this massive star run out of fuel and what will take form. When a massive star runs out of fuel, the core does collapse. It crushes every proton and electron into a neutron at last. When the collapsing star is between one and three solar masses, they stop collapsing leaving behind a neutron star that is this these neutron stars don't emit enough radiation to be detected out in the vastness of space on their run but when neutron stars you spin in a regular rotation they're observed to have regular interval pulses of radiation pulsars have very strong magnetic fields which funnel jets of particles out along to magnetic poles you've learned this in this song these accelerated particles produce very powerful beams of light. They are swept around as the star rotates, making them pulse at night. An example of this pulsing that we observe in a pulsar would be the light spinning in a lighthouse that you can see very far. A pulsar is a star that emits regular oscillations, I say, with a luminosity that does pulse in a metronomic way. I star, also called a black hole star. How bizarre. I'm a hypothetical type of extremely massive luminous star. I'm a quasi star. I may have existed early in the history of the universe. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi star and I am hypothetical. But what's this? It means I haven't been proven as 
yet to exist. I'm a theorized star, bigger than a red super giant star. At 10 billion kilometers in radius, I'd be the biggest by far. Here's a size comparison of what I'd look like hypothetically in our universe against other stars, so you can clearly see. Let's start with your sun in the center of your solar system with a radius of 696,347. The sun is classified as a yellow dwarf star, which is massive to humans, but very small compared to other stars. I'm 7,000 times the size of your sun, which is quite impressive in size. I'd be bigger than anyone. This is Pollux, a red giant star. It's 5.5 million kilometers size this far but when you compare it to me it really looks tiny i would consume it if it got too close pulling it in with my gravity here's a red super giant star going by the name of beetlejuice with a radius of 617 million kilometers of energy to produce but when compared to me it is plain and clear to see i am tremendous next to it let's move on to the next star next to me this is you i scoot It's hard to fathom just how massive I am, it's no surprise. This is a red super giant, or possibly a red hyper giant star. It goes by the name of Stevenson 2 18, it's the biggest by far. It has a radius in kilometers of 1.4 billion in size. As you can see, it's small compared to me in the night sky. Maybe astronomers can discover a quasi star like me someday. You could study astronomy and make me a reality. Star surrounded by a circumstellar disk. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disk from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this, I'm found in the constellation of Musca. Hear this, I'm a B-type star with an exoplanet that does orbit. I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see. It is HD. 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the Very Large Telescope in Chile. Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf located in the disk around my star on my orbital course. I'm a gas giant exoplanet they know this for sure. My mass is 752 Jupiters. One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's HD 10546 Let me tell you a bit more about my disc My circumstellar disc was observed by the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns what they mean no one really knows. My disc is fairly flat with a circular shape with a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet. How great. When looking at the night sky, try to locate the constellation of Musca, but you have to look late. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is 
Chris Stevenson to Dash 18 is seen, also known as RSG C2 Dash 18. I'm the new largest star found by man you know, replacing UI Skutai and other largest stars shown. I'm a red super giant, the largest stars in the universe. In terms of volume, you just learned this in this verse. If Stevenson 2 18 replaced the sun in the solar system, its photosphere would extend beyond the orbit of Saturn. I have an estimated radius of 2,150 times that of the sun. Here's a bit more about me. My volume's about 10 billion times greater than the sun. A little fact you should know. Don't go, I'm not done. I was discovered by an American astronomer, Charles Sun in 1990, I'm sure. I'm a red super giant in the constellation of Scutum. Let's see how far I am from your nation. I'm roughly 20,000 light years away from Earth. You see, I shine with 440,000 solar luminosities. I have an estimate of 2,150 solar radii. That's bigger than the star of UI Scutai. My temperature is thought to be 3200 K K meaning Kelvin I have so much more to say I'm the new champion of the universe largest stars by size try to find me with your eyes when looking to the night sky I'm Stevenson 2 dash 18 red super giant star the biggest you've ever seen the new biggest star Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am VY Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 when French astronomer Jerome Lalande locked me in my recordings begun. A red class M hypergiant's what I'm classified as. Stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss by stellar winds you see. My distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away. One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say. I used to be the largest star in the universe, you see, until some hypergiants like you, Iskatai, dwarfed me. I am the Y Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am VY Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. If you want to locate me while looking up in the night sky, you'd have to use the telescope. You can't see me with the naked eye. If you have a telescope, point to the constellation of Canis Major and look to the left to the Delta Star for a Station. 990 million kilometers is my radius. Aren't you glad you are paying attention and learning all of this? 5,822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be. I'm hot and extremely bright. And if I replace the sun in your present solar system, I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were crumbs. I am the Y Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am VY Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life. I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife. I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course. Scientists think I'll explode into a supernova, but no one 
sure. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris, my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy This is an interstellar course I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai a red super giant in the Scutum constellation am I? I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory. I was named BD-125055 until my second survey I was found to be slightly more bright. That's when I was named UI Scutai, the 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy, but because I'm so far from Earth, you need a telescope to see me. I'm 30 times the sun's mass, but I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span. I am UI Scutai. The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red super giant in the Scutum constellation. Am I? I'm 9,500 light years away from your Earth. One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles for what that's worth. I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars, and I am a red super giant. I hope you like me so far. I'm close to the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy. I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me. My photosphere would span past Jupiter's orbit, as you can see. I've begun to fuse helium and continue to fuse hydrogen in the shadow around my core based on models of stellar evolution after fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core and resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me look for me in the night sky within your galaxy I am UI Scutai the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red super giant in the Scutum constellation. Am I? I am UI Scutai, the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star. I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far. My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well. Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell. I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB. My name's Trappist 1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. 
I am serious, a a main sequence star. That's me. We're all stars. We're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars. We're all stars. Our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium. Here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2, composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true. My name is Pollux, a red giant star here. Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear. R-136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. My name is Rigel, a blue-white supergiant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy. In the year of 1781, he discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine million years as for an estimate that's fine i've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel becoming a super giant after i expanded and i cool i expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova here is more leaving a neutron star or black hole but no one knows for sure i'm classified as a blue white super giant star how fun which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun Sun, my brightness is so grand But I'll vary slightly in brightness Until the day I'm done I'm thought to be 18 to 24 times More massive than your sun My radius is a straight line From my center to my circumference Which is more than 70 times That of your sun in reference My surface temperature is 12,100 kK Meaning Kelvin, a base unit Of temperature in the SI I say, the next time you're out at night Look for Orion in the Sky, look for the hunter's leg. I'm bright to the naked eye. My name is Rigel, a blue white supergiant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel, a blue white supergiant star. In the Orion constellation, I am the brightest so far. I'm Halley's Comet, the most famous comet in the galaxy. About every 75 years, I'm in the Earth's vicinity. I'm Halley's Comet. Ops.
slash Haley designated officially. I'm a short period comet orbiting less than 200 years, you'll see. I've been observed by astronomers since 240 BCE. When the Chinese, Babylonian, and Europeans recorded Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars. We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far. Alpha 
Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class. Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know, at 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better with an orbital period of almost 80 years by far and from a distance we're so close we look like one star i'm proxima centauri a small and faint red dwarf star you cannot see me with the naked eye though i'm the closest star by far i'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and i'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer robert eins i'm sure in south africa at the union observatory in johannesburg my latin name proxima centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of centaurus that's all that's assigned we're alpha centauri the closest star system to the solar system your earth is from alpha centauri is a triple star system we're 4.37 light years away from your sun we're alpha centauri a and alpha centauri b which forms a pair of stars called binary alpha centauri a officially rigel Centaurus. alpha centauri b officially toliman i trust centauri c officially proxima centauri here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020 Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare Only occurring around once in every 20 years but this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare Only because of how close we planets will appear It's said the last time this occurred was in medieval times In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky You can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead But we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400 Typically Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years Every couple of decades Jupiter laps Saturn in flight Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020 Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a molecular cloud. I'm a type of nebula. I have a high density and a very low temperature. This combination creates a gas molecular hydrogen. That's primarily what I'm made of along with 
cosmic dust within. When the force of gravity exceeds the outward push of gas, the pressure is so great that I can't help it and start to collapse, which is caused from a shockwave from a near exploding star. Or when two molecular clouds collide, now isn't that bizarre? When the gravity's too strong, I break apart into smaller clouds. Each cloud is a star's beginning in which I am very proud. Proto stars are the name of the clouds that do break free. Let me introduce a proto star that was a part of me. Hello there, I'm the beginning of any kind of star. Let me introduce myself to you. I am a proto star. My core is not hot enough for fusion to occur. To achieve that level of stardom, that process is a chore. The first thing I do when I'm re free from my molecular cloud, I start to spin until I form this disc around me. You see now, as the Rotates, I produce a strong magnetic field Pulling gas and dust into my center core as I reveal The infalling gas releases a kinetic energy Creating heat, increasing the temperature in the center of me At this point I can transform into a hydrogen burning star Which is when the nuclear fusion starts in a protostar This is when I cross over to stage 3 called Titori We play our different roles in the star formation you see this is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe a nebula is the beginning of the star before its birth the star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes i'm a titori star now also a pre-made sequence star my job's to clear away the dust and gas and send it really far my stellar winds create bipolar outflows that decrease my mass till i I'm a main sequence star, my center burning nuclear gas. Now I'm a main sequence star, now just like the sun you know. For billions of years I will burn throughout my light show. Converting hydrogen to helium is how fusion exists. It wants to blow me apart but has a hard time doing this. Cause of gravity of equal power pushing me in. I'm able to stay burning since the fusion did begin. There are many kinds of stars throughout the universe go learn about them all now that you know how they are birthed this is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe a nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth the star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes this is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe a nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth the star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of the star and all its basic changes here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system we're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done we're measured by our radius you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. My name is Tethys. I'm one of Saturn's 82 moons. My radius is 531 kilometers, it is true. I am Dion. I orbit Saturn, you do see. My radius is 561 kilometers, that is me. Ariel is my name. Uranus is what I orbit. My radius is 578 kilometers, I'm third on the list. Hi, I'm Umbriel. Uranus is where I'm from. My radius is 584 kilometers. I am spun. I'm the moon of Sharon. I float in orbit Pluto. Radius is 606 kilometers. This I do know. I'm Iapetus, a moon of Saturn. Radius of 734 kilometers as I turn. Oberon is my name, outermost moon of Uranus. 761 kilometers is my radius. I am Rhea, Saturn's second largest moon. Radius of 763 kilometers. See you soon. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit. We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. 
Not Titania, the largest moon of Uranus. 788 kilometers is my radius. The name is Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. I'm 1353 kilometers in radius in this tune. Europa is frozen and the moon of Jupiter. My radius is 1560 kilometers. I am the moon of the planet. Earth. My radius is 1737 kilometers for what it's worth. Hello, I'm Io, the strangest moon of Jupiter with a radius of 1821 kilometers. I'm Callisto, I orbit Jupiter, you see. My radius is 2410 kilometers, that's all on me. Titan is my name, Saturn's my claim to fame. 2574 kilometers is my radius, I claim. I'm gonna meet the largest moon in the solar system. Jupiter is what I orbit, yeah, that's where I'm from. My radius is 2634 kilometers now. Let's listen to the chorus while the moons take a bow. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system We're happy if you'd shed some light on us until we are done We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this This celestial event is called a solar eclipse Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me I'm passing between the sun and the earth till black is what you see Several stages and some visual tips that you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse. Stage one is called a partial eclipse, is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon, like this. Stage two is called Bailey's Beats, which are bright spots of light. It's when low lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through, that's right. Stage three is sometimes called the diamond ring. This stage is key in which marks the last few seconds before totality the last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of light on the side of the moon the fourth and most important stage is called totality when the moon completely covers the disk of the sun this is what you see then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the bailey's beads which once had shown but before you see this celestial for eye injuries to prevent This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this On Monday, August 21st, 2017 There's a total solar eclipse North America will see But the totality you want to see can only Observed from Lincoln Beach, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say. Seen in 14 states in the continental US of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there. And please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online. So protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total. which I travel on the Earth's surface. This is a total solar eclipse. My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this. A solar eclipse has several areas we need to discuss. Take a look at this picture to learn each part is a must. Here's a penumbra, a partially shaded outer region. Surrounding the umbra, a fully shaded inner part that's darkened. A partial eclipse is what you're seeing. Which I travel on the Earth's surface This is 
a total solar eclipse. My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Look in the night sky to see a part of me. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Your solar system's just a tiny part of me. The Milky Way name came from a Greek goddess named Hera who spilled milk across the sky. Greeks believed in that era. When you look at the darkest sky on a clear summer night and you see the image of the Milky Way clear in sight, remember you can only see a small part of me called the galactic core in my galaxy. Astronomers can't look at me from outside the galaxy because I'm so massive and you don't have the technology based on other galaxies we see outside of our own is why we conclude that our galaxy spiraled as i'm shown when you look at a side view of the milky way here you see me as a flat disc with a bulge center i appear i am the milky way galaxy look in the night sky to see a part of me i am the milky way your solar system's just a tiny part of me. I was born about 13.6 billion years ago. That's a hypothesis given from astronomers, though. I am 100,000 light years in diameter. That's an estimate given by NASA, though they can't be sure. Your solar system's this tiny dot that you see right here. Astronomers think that Orion spurs where your system appears. Your system's guessed to be 20. 5,000 light years from the galactic center of the Milky Way shown here. About 230 million years is what your system takes to orbit around the Milky Way center's cool shape. 200 to 400 billion stars live in me. That's an estimate only based on our astronomy. Over 100 billion planets might exist in me. Maybe someday you can see them in our galaxy. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Look in the night sky to see a part of me. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Your solar system's just a tiny part of me. Let's take a look at all the parts that you think I'm made of. We'll start by looking down at the galaxy above. The galactic core's the rotational center you can't see Because of the interstellar dust it cannot be studied It's believed the center is a supermassive black hole When astronomers find out more then I will let you know You'll notice the galactic bar and also the long bar There's the three KPC arms, there is a near and there's a far Then we have the Sagittarius and the Norma arms Then the Orion spur where your solar system spins on The Scutum Centaurus and Perseus arm Are two major spirals and full of the galaxy's charm Finally the outer arm and the new outer arm Are the final spirals I will mention in this song I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way your solar system's just a tiny part of me. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Look in the night sky to see a part of me. I am the Milky Way Galaxy. Your solar system's just a tiny part of me. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet. Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well, but didn't plan it. I am Haumea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in the 
was mixed. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out Planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tories, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way galaxy, and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with this is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I'm a star called the sun. I'm the center of our solar system. I'm a supermassive black 
of galaxies I'm a supermassive black hole There are theories of how I'm formed Come and join me and see There are three types of black holes According to theory Primordial, stellar, and supermassive like me The primordial's a tiny hypothetical black hole In 1974 Stephen Hawking theorized its role Primordials were formed in the early universe But we'll learn about this more when I teach that topics course On to the most common type called the stellar black hole But let's first see why a star exists before it loses control The pressure from the nuclear fuel in the core pushes outward so greatly While the force of an equal power pushing in is caused by gravity This equal pressure does create the star's main sequence stage That means the star is stable its present burning age when it starts with the sun's mass run out of nuclear fuel in its core it becomes a red giant that quietly becomes a white dwarf but starts with 25 the mass of your solar system sun runs out of nuclear fuel its gravity crushes the core and becomes a stellar it's the most common type in the universe now i will tell you how i'm created of course now i'm a super massive black hole the third type of black hole scene Black hole's a region of space with a force of gravity so strong That nothing, not even light can escape, you've learned in this song How I acquired my mass is still yet to be determined And astronomers are still working on how I'm formed, that is certain Some think I'm formed from the collapse of a massive cloud of gas During the early stages of the formation of galaxies with mass My parts start with the accretion disk orbiting around me It's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity the singularity is the very center of a black hole you see made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density the event horizons the radius around the singularity which energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity the innermost stable orbits the last place material orbits safely without the risk of falling past the point of no return in me a photon sphere is a location where gravity is strong that light can travel in circles and orbiting the black hole are photons i feed on stars dust and gas and produce jets of near light speed blasting particles and radiation out of my poles as you can see these are relativistic jets and the last part i'll talk about thank you for learning with me now i am out There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, situated in the constellation of Aries. My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier32, a dwarf early type galaxy, am I? 2.65 million light years from Earth, I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy. You see, sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out while I'm spun. I was first discovered in the year of 1773. 76,000 light years is the distance across me. I'm the Milky Way Galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk with a bright central bulge that you can't miss. I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is 8 kpc from my center. On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender. I'm Hope's Object, a non-typical galaxy. 
of the type known as the Ring Galaxy, as you can see. 121,000 light years across, bigger than the Milky Way, discovered by author Hogan, 1958. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. On the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular and ring galaxy, discovered by Fritz Wicke in 1941. I'm 150,000 light years across, my beauty is number one. I am M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, discovered by Pierre Michon in 1781, if you please. I'm 170,000 light years across, nearly twice the size of the Milky Way, now that's quite a toss. I'm the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy, I say, in the nearest major galaxy to your Milky Way. My name stems from the constellation of Andromeda. I'm 220,000 light years across, I'll be seeing ya. I'm NGC 6872, also known as Condor Galaxy. I'm a large part spiral galaxy, I'm sure you'd agree. Discovered in 1835 by John Herschel, the boss. I'm very large at 700,000 light years across. I'm the giant temple galaxy, a disrupted part spiral, you see. I was discovered in the year of 2018. I'm 10 times the size of the Milky Way that's extremely large my friend. I'm 1 million light years long from end to end. I'm IC 1101, a super giant elliptical galaxy. I'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe. You see, discovered in the year of 1790 by John Herschel. Six million light years across with stars I am full. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation After the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has accumulated in my core so well and hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells when my outer shells expand i take on a red color because i'm cooler than i was i'm happy to discover red super giants are the largest known stars in the universe and i'm expected to supernova Go on to the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel Without even trying When that happens to a star as massive as me The entire star collapses and explodes It's a supernova you see When I do supernova I'll create quite a sight Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life. One of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky. I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so. 